Hello and welcome to lesson 5 of our Data First Google Ads Optimization course. In this video, we will use the segments and audiences in GA4. We will create those and then we will also use them in Google Ads. Segments and audiences, they offer us interesting possibilities, so we will discover them together. What we will do, we will create some segments, non-purchasers, people who did not purchase your product. We will create another segment, people who were specifically interested of a product group of yours. Let's say you are selling watches and dresses, so you want to spare them. Or maybe you are selling uh, some products for men and women or men and kids. You want to create different audiences and different segments for them. We will create a segment for high value customers. Let's say you are selling a very expensive product and lots of cheap products. You always want to spare these people who are interested in your expensive products and also who maybe purchase those products. Uh, and lastly, we will use GA4's predictive metrics. So let's start with what we will do with these things. Like why are we creating these audiences and segments? And more importantly, what is even an audience or what is even a segment? Let's quickly dive into GA4 and I will try to explain it there. This is not a data analytics course. So this is more about Google Ads optimization and using data uh, to optimize your Google Ads set. But hopefully I will make you understand how we can use audiences and segments. So I am in GA4. Uh, under explore section, let's go to explore section first, explore section. And then here I'll just click blank. And then here there is a part called segments in your own account. Now I'm obviously using Google's demo account. That's why I cannot go. But normally you could also go from admin and then audiences. And here you could create an audience. But now I'm going through explore. This is like a little bit of a workaround. Click blank. And now here in the segments, I'll click plus. Build a new segment, user segment, session segment, and event segment. Uh, this is a little bit complex, but I will uh, be using user segment. User segment will allow us to group the users by users. Uh, and then obviously session and event are different things. Now we will focus on the users. Here we also have some pre-made segments. Non-purchasers are here, for example. Let's click into that. As you can see here, non-purchasers, and then there is, this looks scary, but it's actually easy. I will quickly show you. You can see here what non-purchasers means. Exclude users when the purchase event happens. Apart from that, everybody is non-purchasers. So this is how Google created the non-purchasers audience. And as you can see here, um, 60K users are included. 974 users are excluded, which means 974 is purchasers and 60 Ks are not purchasers. And here it's also visible 98% of all users, right? So this audience builder is pretty strong. And probably this is the most exciting feature of GA4 in my opinion, because in universal analytics, we were quite limited with that. Here we can create so many complex audiences and segments. But again, that's not our topic now. So this is a segment, but I can also click and build audience. I will now explain you what segment and audience, what's the differences. So the segment is just for reporting purposes, right? It's not a set of people. It's not a list. It's just a condition. When I say segment, non-purchasers, then in Google Analytics, I can simply view the reports by this segment. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between segments and audiences, and then we will start building them. Segments are retroactive. When you create a segment, it will apply to your historical reports as well. So this non-purchaser segment, for example, we can use in the GA4 um, as a report. Uh, so if, you, if we put non-purchasers as a segment, we will see all the behavior reports, landing pages, product performances, according to this non-purchasers. Um, but audiences are not retroactive. Audiences start from the time we create them, it starts getting collected and it is mostly used in the ads. So when we, when we create this segment, non-purchasers, and if we also choose build an audience, and then if we choose a set to maximum limit, if I just save this, obviously this is saved now, so I don't need to save, but if I just save this, then segment I will use in the reporting and the audiences I will use in the advertisement. So in Google ads, I can choose this audience I can give specific bits, I can run remarketing ads, I can do lots of things in Google Ads with these audiences. So this is simple difference between audiences and segments. And the use cases, 
We mentioned about some use case, but non-purchasers, for example, we can just go ahead and check landing page report. Non-purchasers, which landing pages they, they visit? Purchasers, which landing pages they visit? Just as an example, or other pages. In this case, we can understand maybe some pages lead to purchase more, and then we can decide to run ads more on those pages, right? This is just an idea. Interest in specific product group, we are selling watches, we are selling dresses. We can just come here. Let's do that together. Let's just click a user segment. And we will just use, let's say, product specific. And then add new condition, view item. And then I just search here item name, or you could also say item category. And here there is contains. I don't know this stores, of course, categories, but let's just, I think there was a drinkware category, if I remember well. Let's see if the data will be populated here. Yes, there is some. As you can see here, 3.7% of the users now are interested in the drinkware category. If I just save this, now I have a specific segment, an audience who viewed item uh, in this category. I can put another rule. I could say who viewed item at least five times. Let's do that. I will choose the same event and then I will say event count at least three times. I could even give a within time period. I could say in 10 days or something, but I don't want to make it too complex now. Let's remove it. So now in this collection, in this category drink for your collection, I am targeting people who viewed at least three items. Now we are going more specific, right? And here sky is the limit. You can just, according to your own use case, you can generate more specific cases. You could even say, maybe you are running specific Google Ads campaign. You could even edit here. You can say that source and medium is from Google Ads and then is interested in this category and so on. If I just build an audience, membership duration 30 days, if I just say 30 days, then every 30 days, this audience will be deleted. I could say set to maximum limit. There is no infinite because every um, ads account or browser has its own cookie limits. So Google cannot keep this infinite. But when we say set to maximum, of course, it will do its best. If I just save and apply now, we have a new, uh, obviously, it will not publish because this is a test account. But now we have a new audience, product specific audience. How we can use it? We can run ads, we can run remarketing campaigns, we can use this as a bit and so on. So this was that example. Let's see high value customers. What we could do, we could say maybe end to cart. And then we could say not event count. But maybe let's just uh, remove this once again. We just say add to cart. And then we say, we say maybe larger than 10. Google's demo account has data problems, so now this showed zero. As if I remember well, the add to cart values weren't shown properly in Google Ads account, or it could be another thing too. But uh, we are just sh I'm just showing you an example. If your data analytics setup is properly done, this should work for you. You could set like an add to cart value, or checkout value, or purchase value. This depending on how you define a high value customer. So we are already doing an example. This could be another example. We could say, yeah, drinkware. And then we could say like, I don't know, maybe high value. Or maybe we could say something like cart larger than 50 and so on. Let's check our last example, predictive metrics. Here we have, I'll remove all these things. Let's again choose include. By the way, you can also choose exclude. You could say, for example, people who is in this category exclude the purchasers. Maybe you don't want the purchasers. So here we have some predictive metrics. Predicted revenue, predicted top centers, a couple of other things. Or even uh, Google already offers you here some set of examples. Top spenders, seven day purchasers, churning users, seven day purchasers and so on. You could also use this predictive metrics. You could create audiences based on that. And then the same thing, we could import them into Google Ads and use them in Google Ads. In your account, predictive metrics might look empty. That could be for two different reasons. One, maybe you don't have enough data. 
to your account settings aren't done properly. For that, check our first video. In first video, we just did some account settings. And also, if you are in the Europe region and if you are uh, using GDPR compliant consent setup, then the predictive metrics might not work as expected. So don't rely on predictive metrics much, but it's worth to check if it is there. I think it can be quite useful. So now let's just create likely seven day purchasers. You can see here Google purchase probability. That's a metric 90%. You could also change this, you know, you could say not 90, but maybe 50. Here you can see it's pretty awesome, actually. Apply, save and apply. Now we have that audience. Okay, we have all these audiences. Why did we do this? For two reasons. One, for reporting purposes. Let's go to report. What are these people doing? Um, engagement. Page and screens, let's just check their classic page, be page behaviors, right? So here I'll just add comparison, include. Now here we will this time write audience, audience name. We will choose, there are some audiences that earlier created, likely seven day purchasers, apply, remove. Now we see the pages that they visit. I mean, this maybe this doesn't make much sense, but this is how we use it in reporting. How What, what could be done? Let's say you made, you created a new Google Ads campaign. You made a nice video, a shiny, beautiful video. You have a new photo set. You just want to know how this campaign attracts people and how those people who come from that specific campaign behaves on your website. This is a great use case. You just go ahead, create a specific audience and segment for that specific campaign. This time you can imagine you will simply choose that as a source and medium Google Ads campaign, you will choose that specific campaign and then you will come and see. That's the way how you can uh, view all the reports with one click uh, according to this specific group. So that's how we use within the report. Now let's go to Google Ads and let's use these audiences within Google Ads. When you are on Google Ads, click Tools and Settings. Under shared library, there is audience manager. Here, all your segments will be listed just to make it easy because there will be here lots of audiences because Google Ads also has its own audiences. We can just add a source filter. Here we can simply choose source. And then from the source, you can come here and find uh, GA4, Google Analytics 4. Yes, GA4 is here. We should just choose it and then apply. This will show all the audiences that come from GA4. Some of them will not have enough data, so you cannot use them in your ads, uh, especially if you recently created it. If I remember well, there should be at least 1000 users within an audience so that you can start advertising on them. Best practice with the audiences is create as much as you need. Uh, try to segment your users from different standpoints. Import them into Google Ads. You don't need to do something specific to import. And in case you did the steps in our first lesson, which means connecting the uh, GA4 and Google Ads properly. And then you can start using these audiences and segments in the campaigns. In the next section of our courses, in the optimize section and the create section, we will talk more about it, how to use segments and audiences to optimize your campaigns and even to create new campaigns. So that is upcoming. Hopefully we will release uh, the second section on August and then the third section on September. Maybe by the time you are watching this video, it's already done. So make sure to check our website and to sign up for the updates so that you do not miss these important information. I hope you find it useful. Please contribute and communicate with us. Leave your comments, subscribe to our channel, follow our pages on LinkedIn and also use our hub information hub where we share some useful tips and tricks as blog posts. You can sign up for our newsletter not to miss any updates. So I hope this was useful. Uh, now we are done with the fifth lesson of our Google Ads optimization course. See you in the last and sixth lesson. Thank you.